processed it, and now I'm ready to review the edits. Um, and so this, just real quick, I'm going to go ahead, is actually a sample episode from our product manager, Colby, who has his own podcast called The Craft. So we'll go ahead and just walk through um, how I would edit this episode uh, in the state where I'm reviewing the episode. So, and let me know. And, and really kind of hone in on. Can you hear the audio? Yes. Perfect. Is that Colby's okay. voice? So that's not Colby. That's his co-host. I will, real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and enhance. because With I know what we do, maybe a little less abstract. The other day, we were unable to get that process before the end of our session. So as you see with Enhance, if you turn it on, it, it makes the levels um, much louder usually because we're kind of mastering the audio to that broadcast standard. So it's and you know, multiple tracks. If you have multiple tracks, will be more consistent across the board. So yeah, we'll go ahead and dive in. Um, so this is how I would do an edit of a podcast in Resound. With what we do, maybe a little less Let's go ahead in this and really kind of hone in on like uh, so one thing about resound I will say and you're, you'll see this in my demo is we really built resound to empower users AI tools I believe <laughs> I have a deep conviction that should be used to empower not replace you and your process and um, I want us to always give users uh, the ability to adjust the recommendations that we make um, and so I'm going to make adjustments here as I'm reviewing the, the episode. One note, I will say, you, we do have this X cut all buttons. So if you did prefer, hey, I'm just going to trust the AI and maybe like your mentality is 80% out the door is better than 100% in the drawer. That's great. Go ahead and click that and you can do that. Um, and I'm going to turn on these two settings that I prefer to use um, one's called auto advance, which just jumps the play it to the next edit. And then the other is auto preview. So I can hear the edits after I make them. So in this and really kind of hone in on like, so uh, in this and really kind of in this and really kind of hone in on if we're thinking about, and there's kind of different iterations of that, uh, but in there, what's the, what's the protocol uh, when, what's the, what's the protocol when things. Are so you'll, you'll notice that, you know, some of the some of the boundaries like are perfect and um we're going to continue to improve our models so some of them i'm just cutting and moving on to the next one um, but some of them i might make adjust make small tweaks make small adjustments you can zoom in a little bit more and whenever i edit that's something i'm always like jumping zooming in zooming out zooming in zooming out sometimes you see like this is a uh that bleeds into another word and so the boundary is pretty solid here but I'm going call to when things are, I'm actually not going to adjust that one at all because if I do, it's probably going to make it more noticeable. Um, and that's do the thing, you know, uh, and that's Colby there do the thing, you know, and, and it was, it's very, so one other thing I will say, um, you notice there Colby said, and, and so he said, uh, and, and so that's one thing about resound. You can make manual edits by click right clicking. So, and, and it was, so in this case, I'm going to just drag this one out to that next one and then do the thing, you know, and it was, it's very straightforward. So I got rid of that. Um, and that, and there, there'll be another example where I'll show you how it add in a manual edit here in a minute, but it was really kind of like, yeah, there's, there's not like a, one thing I will say is I'm using these keyboard shortcuts up here. Um, so left and right jumps to the next edit. Uh, and then you can use up or down to cut or keep. So I sometimes forget that when people are like, how is he probably doing that without clicking the buttons? You can also click cut or keep here to do that. So I it like, yeah, there's, there's not like a, so I think there's an example where he said, there's not like a, I think he's trying to say, uh, like, there's not like, uh, uh, as in like, <laughs> uh, something. So I'm going to actually keep that one and you'll see that that left it in. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely super inspired by, um, uh, I mean, I'm definitely super inspired by. So that's a real tricky one. And even if I was, uh, I mean, I def myself as a professional audio engineer, that's going to be a really tough one to cut. And again, I think sometimes whenever I'm editing, the best edit you can do is not edit, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like, it in. if oh. it's more distracting <clears throat> with the edit than the, um, leave it in, you know? Um, 
and I, you know, I just literally said, um, in, in our conversation, it's like, as long as it's, I think for me, the main thing I'm thinking about is as the listener, how distracting are these things? And so if someone says, uh, after every other word, you may not remove every single one, but you're going to reduce, remove, reduce them <laughs> so that the listeners have a more enjoy enjoyable overall listening experience. So let's try that one more time. Play super inspired by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely super inspired by Lin-Manuel Miranda. That's, I think, another one where I'm probably maybe going to... Play super inspired by um, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yeah, I'm just going to reduce the space there instead. I think that's one of the things about editing that I will say, and that's one of the reasons why I believe that AI will never fully replace the entire process of post-production. Editing is like an art. It's not it's not like a perfect science. And a lot of times as an editor, you're, you're making like judgment calls on your own. There's not like black and white, remove this, keep this in, remove this, keep this in. Um, and that's really how we've designed resound to work on my path right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, on my path right now, <laughs> but yeah. So one thing I will say, we're currently working on a model that uh looks at in between words so different things like these breath like this breath path, right? this breath artifact here and other things clicks and pops that type of thing so right now for me i will sometimes extend out the boundaries because we're very precise on the filler word right boundary but you might need to adjust the boundaries left or right depending on how much space what other contents around it right now hopefully with the future model we'll have that more like smart at smart before and after <laughs> information to be able to determine, hey, how, you know, should you move the the space before or after, um, which I think is going to just make our models that much more professional sounding and smooth in the editing process. That's not my path right now. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm working in practice. So he's written um, practice. So novel. So he's written so, some so that looks like that's one I'm going to keep. So he's written some novels, you know. Sounds like there was like his mic kind of cut out in that sum. <laughs> so we'll just leave that for now. Um, he doesn't set a word count expectation. And so this is like an example of long silence detected. We have V1 of this out, which detects silence under over three seconds. Um, we're working on, or we are working on a future version where you'll be able to adjust that parameter to shorter, longer, and also adjust like the threshold, hopefully. So, and I think that an axes, I mean, we've talked about uh, creative current axes, I mean, we've talked about a creative com an axes, I mean, we've talked about creative com is the, the Kaizen method, uh, is the, the Kaizen method even like face i'm gonna move a little bit quicker now just to go through get through these um face it in a way just kind of face face it in a way and it doesn't just kind of just kind of a matter of showing up at a baseball coach or to your work to up somewhere to your work to you know something you just what's the next move is what's the next move or if you don't want to go uh one thing to note you can kind of work a little bit faster if you actually like go ahead and accept it before it, the playhead gets there. And that way you're actually listening to what the edit would sound like with the AI. So it would essentially be, what would it sound like if I hit the accept all button? Take it just for a second, because it's really common. going to be fun. going to be fun every time. I mean, something I wrote, I mean. So you hit, you see that click there. I'm going to go ahead. Actually, something I we can do a manual edit here. So if you right click in the timeline, it'll add a manual edit. And then you can. It's not going to be. that in. It's not going to be fun every time. I mean, something. So a little bit of information after it. I'm going to go ahead and just line that it's up. It's not going to be fun every time. I mean, something I. Maybe just give it a little more space there. It's not going to be fun every time. I mean, something I wrote down was. Uh, I mean, something I wrote down was. I think there's a. So again, like a mouth click. I mean, there. something I wrote down was. I think there's a real sense of real, real sense of. So there's a good example where there's a lot of space before and after um, right here at the beginning. Like this is what I would call like what we call a transient. <clears throat> a lot of times with the pacing and editing, if you 
edit all the way to the next transient, it's going to sound the most natural, at least a lot. That's a lot of times. That's not always the case, but because like real sim Colby said something here and then he's pausing to think probably a breath in here. Um, and then another breath here. If we just clipped out the, um, there's a good chance we would have like what's called a double breath. So just be aware, depending on how much space is around your filler word. And again, hopefully <laughs> in our next version, of the model will be able to, um, have that before word or in between words information to be able to make smarter recommendations like this real sense of sometimes. Okay. And that didn't sound super natural. Real sense of sometimes there's some information in here. I'm I think there's a real sense of sometimes there we go. That sounds better to me. Yeah. He Creative. was thinking about it. Oh, okay. Okay. That's interesting. When, yeah. With the trim head, Oh, I don't know if that's a technical thing there. When you, uh, oh, the, the, the playhead, <laughs> the, um, the cut where you're doing the cut and keeps. Yes. Does it fade in and fade out? And that's why it sounds so great clean. Question. Yeah. Great question. So I'm going to hop over to pro tools after, <laughs> after this and show you, show you that. But yes, we do uh, behind the scenes, apply a small crossfade. Um, that's strongly recommended and pretty common for any audio engineer whenever you're making an edit, uh, oftentimes it can result in like a choppy sounding edit. And so because of that, we apply a small, small, what's small, a small crossfade. It basically is just fading the volume in and out, um, where the, where on the before and after track. Right. And so it extends it. So that, that definitely helps make the edit sound smoother. I'm not sure what's here, but you can be like, Oh, like I need to wait. I'm going to leave that meal for someone. And if we meal for someone, and if we give ourselves too many similar there meal for someone, and if we give ourselves too many outs of that, the next day of that, the next day, another approach could be. So another approach, I think he's that the next day, I think he said, uh, uh, there, but let's just, uh, another approach could be, no, actually, I was just another, so I'm going to leave that another approach really helpful framework that I heard really helpful framework that I heard with a video from Matt Tivella on his project from uh in so there's like a false start we can go ahead and clip that this out. this project in this genre in a different genre or kind of like these jet gbt prompts right it's like this is a good example real quick genre in a different genre in a different genre this genre in a different genre in a different in the genre so he like says in a diff in a and he kind of does a false start so i'm gonna just go ahead and clip that false start out and let's in a different genre or much better in my opinion <laughs> making making it less boring so those are like all this all this this is a big affirmation i'm trying to think it into a small it into a smaller idea understanding things that my things that my mind knows that i'm doing but it just that's you kind of have yeah. to really push through. Um, that's you chore and just listen to a podcast. Uh, and so that chore and just listen to a podcast. And so that's to me. So that's that uh there, just pause for a second. Like, like I, need I need to get, get better, better at sentence structure or something that's yeah. really specific. To me. So Got let's it. say like there's like uh in to me. So Got let's it. say like there's like in like global like global. Global, like your. So Colby says, like a lot. It sounds like too. We do. We are currently working on I mean, additional so, words other than ums and ahs, and so that's that would be something. Hopefully, in the very very near future, <laughs> in the next couple of months, that you'd be able to also recognize like other other common words that people say. Ums and ahs are universally kind of the most common thing, but definitely. We all have our own like things that we like to say, you know, like totally <laughs> block. And then you have your <laughs> Chris, skill set uh, level. What are mine? Oh, well, I just, I always, but, oh, but, yeah, uh, I always start and stop my sentences or don't get it out of the right. I, it's more like a hesitation. I mm -hmm. hesitate every time I open my mouth. Like uh, a so, false yeah, like start. start. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You know, whatever. You know what we mean. Mean setting. Mean setting that aside. 
that aside, what helps you when you're in that place of thing to do? But then again, I'm gonna... sometimes that's the right thing to do. But then sometimes that's the right thing to do. But then do you ever get to that place or do you feel like that? It is one you need to be a writer, need to be a writer, these sort of things. It's a little pop there. Need to be a writer, these sort of things. And I think, or at least how I'm considering it. Uh, Actually, sorry. I heard a double breath here. I'm going to try to get it off. I would say the one thing is, like, even though it resounds, to be a writer. I believe it's an amazing tool, like, you still need to trust your ears, you know? Um, always trust your ears and <laughs> don't don't rely fully on something else or visual cues um just you know sometimes it helps for me to like need to be maybe close my eyes and so i'm not looking at anything and do i notice did i notice that there would have been an edit there if i didn't visually see it right or these sort of things and i think part of that is just or at least how i'm or at least how i'm considering it and so for me but i want to i want to try to accomplish but also kind of have a kind of have a small view of it and I think that, and I, and I think that falls into this bucket of not recognizing. And I think that falls into this bucket of not. I mean, one of the, I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about. I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about. I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about. So there's one where it's like it bleeds into it. So we got to get really precise on that or either leave it. I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about, I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about, I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about, I mean, one of the things I talk to my students about. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be Sometimes really you have to do that, you know, um, just like spend several times, several, <laughs> Several times listen. Two hundred population population lived for life. in less than thirty dollars a day, less than thirty dollars a day, and so less than thirty dollars a day, and so okay. less than thirty dollars a day, and so less than thirty dollars a day, and so it's yeah. odds or I won't odds or I won't be able to read. That's very very. Odds are I won't be able to read. That's very, very. All right, I'm gonna. Odds are I out just here real quick. Uh, it's very, very. All right, I, I think I am gonna leave that one. Like getting, like getting tired of this. Those. It's like getting tired of this. Those. It's like getting tired of this. Those sort of broader reminders. And I won't and I won't starve to death. And so you can and I won't starve to death. And so you can just that I won't starve to death. And so you can just go and I won't starve to death. And so you can just go. All right. So once I'm done, you'll see the all done. And then you will click export audio. For this one, right now, I'm going to use Pro Tools real quick to show you how to add intro outro music. That is something on the roadmap that we're working on is the ability to add in your intro and outro music because we realize you still have to do that and you probably have to use another tool. So I'm going to go ahead and start the export here. I'm going to include individual tracks because I'm going to put it into Pro Tools, not ready to post to my hosting yet. And then it will start downloading and you can actually close out of this and it will continue to process. You'll see it down here, 12, 23%. And then now I'm going to hop over real quick to Pro Tools, which is a digital audio workstation that I use. And then as soon as those files are downloaded. And you recommend uploading multi-tracks. So yes, Colby yeah, and his guest, you, you recommend doing that so that well, yeah, why do you recommend doing it? Yeah, great question. So I'll show you real quick in here. Um, I would say the main the main reason is if you were if you record <laughs> if you record your tracks separately, and I'll show an example in this. If someone says something in one track, but 
the other track, <laughs> you know, at the same time, right? There's like crosstalk or let's say one person is speaking and the other person coughs or says, um, <laughs> well, if you have it all merged into one track and you cut that, there's really no way to remove that um without removing the content that the other person is saying. Um, and so let's import it into Pro Tools. Now, there's an example in this file where that so actually if, happens. If, so like that, just for instance, just speaking over somebody, you can take that out altogether with a separate tracks. Exactly. Yeah, and also to just like some of the enhancements too, um, we actually do process those. And so whenever we're doing the AI mixing and mastering, we're analyzing the information on each individual track. So it's processed as a multi-track um, enha enhancement, which again, overall, you're just gonna have higher quality. It's still gonna sound better if you have, a, have them both on one track, but if you're doing multi-track, you kind of take advantage of just additional flexibility, um, additional improvements that can happen there. So, so this is the exports here. We will just line them up with like our intro and outro music, which I already have in here. Oh, and real quick, let me just make these bigger so we can see. We'll have to change the screen as well. Oh, shoot. Yes. <laughs> I'm like sitting here in Pro Tools and like thinking you're seeing what I'm seeing. Uh, let's see. Stop sharing. Thanks for going in detail. This really yeah. is. All right. So share audio, share tab instead. Okay. I hopefully it will share my audio whenever I share this edit window in Pro Tools. <laughs> all right. Are you all seeing? I can see the blue, the red, and the green. Perfect. Okay. So these are the tracks that are edited. So this is what has gotten, you see it was enhanced um, out of Pro Tools. And then the blue is just the intro and outro music. So this is how I would add that in. Are you able to hear that? I can hear that perfectly. Okay, perfect. So one thing like in Pro Tools, I want to make sure I keep the tracks synced up. <laughs> so... Can you turn the volume up just a little bit, please? Yeah. It may just be coming through my mic. You know, I've been reading through I don't know. I think it may just be coming through my mic, Chris, on the audio. Yeah, I can't quite hear it. I okay. can hear it, but I can't. It's not defined. Yeah. So we see the music is fading in, just fading in, and then we start the dialogue. And then zoom out here so you can see the entire session same thing on the outro music I think I want that to hit like right at the end of the speaking and again a lot of this is creative you know <laughs> exercising like artistic creative freedom um it's not it's not a perfect science so yeah. like here's a here's examples right where one of the speakers is speaking and then you see that over top there's like crosstalk there some of this so, so this is perfect let's do that so like that and if you had both tracks in there right or merged as one file if you deleted this it would also delete this right <laughs> so it would uh you would essentially be forced to leave that in, right? Whereas if you're doing multi-track, you can sometimes, and sometimes we do this, uh, you can do what's called checkerboarding. Um, so like you could almost like, and you might want to leave these in, like a lot of these are like uh-huhs or like yes, but if you did want to just like make it super clean and so there's no crosstalk, you could simply check what's called checkerboarding. Oh. And then... And now this may or may not need all of this. I'm kind of doing this blindly <laughs> because you uh, not following my advice earlier of trusting my ears right now. But of course I would. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'll just show you real quickly. And that, that, you know, that gets rid of all the silence. And so we do noise reduction, which definitely helps. But <clears throat> this is going to 
also just ensure that like if there is any additional noises pops clicks stuff like that that these tracks sound as clean as possible here's probably one where we would probably do the opposite we'd probably clip that um so real quick on a on crossfade earlier what i talked about so whenever we make an edit right so i'm going to make a manual edit in pro tools um and then let's say i am removing all of this and i'm going to move it into another edit mode which is called shuffle which just means i'm going to keep all the tracks in sync so it, you'll see this jump back whenever i make this cut yeah so, things in sync so now i have that edit point right and then i would add in what's called a crossfade um so we've kind of dialed in like <clears throat> a very small certain type of crossfade and resound uh that's applied on every edit um that gets rid of the like the majority of any clicks and pops ensures kind of smoothness um, obviously in pro tools there's flexibility you can adjust it back and forth but basically this kind of shows you can you see this crossfade window yeah, i can see okay. that it's like the x so yeah it you know there's different types stuff like that most of the time the default works really well but you'll see like as i'm moving it the audio content from the left and right is kind of changing and so you can kind of dial that in but yeah essentially and then you know like let's just real quick drag that back out Oop. let's drag it the other way all right let's just bring it back because <laughs> i want to show a quick example just cut that so like see how there's content there we cut right yep. if i made the crossfade too big <laughs> or not take it out. in the right area it's going to actually fade in that part of the audio that's still there so you just want to make sure you have enough silence there on each side whenever you do those edits and that's kind of you know why our the crossfades we've done are optimized for that one last thing i will show you i'm going to import in the original audio just so you can see the difference in the enhanced version also on this we've we started in resound and now we've gone to pro tools is that your workflow or that, would you prefer yep. would you recommend doing this pro tools first before going to resound that's a great question um so you can do <laughs> either one i I would say that's a rec like a recommendation I would say is do what works best for you and figure out a good workflow. I would probably recommend doing resound first. And part of that is because you can export as an AAF, um, which what that means is I would be able to open the session in Pro Tools. It would basically create a Pro Tools session that you can open. And then you would see all the edits. The edits would be made, but you would see all the edits. And then you can, in Pro Tools, make additional adjustments, right? So you can fade up, you can make small, small tweaks and stuff like that. Um, so you'll see here, like this down here are the, let's drag this back out because this is the same track, I believe. So you'll see, like, just to show you an example of like the noise reduction, it's somewhat impressive i would say like you see this information here in the it's it's very small but <laughs> yeah up here up here it's it's not nearly as much and that's part of the noise reduction and then also just it's not a direct one-to-one -one comparison but let me make them the same size and then let's zoom in So let's see here. Um, this one's probably a better. Colby's levels look like he was recorded a little bit lower. So you can just see there's a lot more, you know, variation, I would say, in the levels here um, of this top one, which that's the original recording, versus I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it versus down here. It's it's a little bit more consistent. And so we're bringing up the, the quieter parts. We are um, bringing down <laughs> the super loud parts just so there's more consistency. And again, so you're not having to adjust your level nearly as much uh, yeah. whenever you're doing that in the mixing and mastering. So, well, wow. yeah. Any, uh, any questions before I close out a resound or close out a Pro Tools? <laughs>
Uh, no, I don't think so. That was really that was really great. And I've back learned, to your I've, yeah, I mean, back to your last question about what would I recommend as far as workflow. Um, like I said, right now we we understand we don't have the ability for you to add in your intro and outro music. So if you have a podcast that has intro and outro music, you have to use another tool. That being said, like in the next couple of months, you should be able to do everything within Resound, and that's our goal. Um, yeah. And Wonderful. that would be. That would be my ideal workflow. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I've, I've been using Audacity uh, because I haven't figured out how to use any other tool. But for the tech of the future, yeah. I was using Resound and then moving to Audacity and adding the music and, and then exporting it. But I don't know how to do the different effects and sound yeah. design and everything. So I'll yeah. leave that to the to the professionals. But 